In this week's episode of the Art of Soul podcast, we're going to be talking about money and in particular, multiple streams of income, which is something that every artist should concern themselves with. Welcome to the Art of Soul podcast. Each week we explore what it means to be an artist, finding your artistic voice, developing your artistic skills, and how to build a professional career and business around your art. Now, please welcome your host, artist and art teacher, Rod Moore. G'day folks, Rod Moore here with you again. Welcome to this week's episode of the Art of Soul podcast. I'm excited to be bringing it to you. And we're going to be talking about a subject that a lot of artists don't really like to talk about or think about, and that is money. What we're going to focus in on today, though, is multiple streams of income and how to generate them and where to look for them. And I'll continue this as a series over the coming podcast, and we'll talk about money further, and uh, we'll talk about the mindset about money and wealth attraction, and why so many artists put up barriers to money, and they don't want to talk about money, and they have a fear around thinking about and talking about money. And uh, we'll talk about this, and, and hopefully it'll help you to release some mental handbrakes that you may or may not have, uh, but really the goal is to help you generate more of an income flow through your art and it's something that I've been able to do very successfully you know, over the last couple of years but you know, I've been working at it since well November 2010 I did my very first oil painting and uh, from that moment I was hooked and uh, I've been working at it since then some of it part-time some of it full-time but you know nine years at the time of recording this episode of the Art of Soul podcast so I've learned a lot about how to generate income and cash flow and attract money to you uh, if you're an artist. And so I want to share the benefits of my experience with you and hopefully it will help you to improve the results you're getting from a financial point of view, right? Um, because I do believe that if you're going to be an artist, you know, especially if you want to be a full-time artist, like I'm very fortunate that today, uh, you know, for the last three years, I've basically been a full-time artist and, uh, Every day I work away at generating an income from my art. And I feel very fortunate to be able to do that. But I want to give back as well and help other artists. You know, I want to help other artists reach up and uh, be able to achieve similar results. Because what I've achieved, there's nothing spectacular about what I've achieved. In fact, there's many, so many better artists than me out there. I'm, a, I'm an okay artist. I'm a good artist. I'm getting better but by no means a great artist. Uh, but there's many, many better artists out there than me who don't get anywhere near the financial returns that I get. And uh, I'll hopefully shed some light on why that is. So I think the first thing I want to say is it is important that you be very careful about where you get information from. Okay, uh, There's so many opinions out there. And in, we live in a day and age where there's so many people that have set themselves up in this role of being an artist business coach and uh, we've zero experience in many cases to a little experience uh you know somebody who made a little bit of money selling their art 10 years ago is now an art coach uh i know people who run galleries but never successfully earn an income from their own art in their own art practice went on to running galleries and now giving advice to artists uh in a vastly different landscape and i'll just give you an example of how if you take advice from the wrong people, how damaging that can be, right? So there's one particular art business coach who uh, one of his mantras, I guess, is telling people that uh, all of your future buyers are going to come from strangers and therefore you need to get good at talking to strangers. And so I thought, you know, I've heard him repeat this message over and over, and I'm not criticizing this particular person. This is based on his experience of being in a gallery a gallery owner or a gallery manager and having artists with opening nights and strangers coming and the artists being too scared to talk to the strangers, right? So it makes perfect sense. But how valid is it in the, the landscape of the market we, we operate in today? Well, I question it, right? And, and you have to question everything that you hear out there. Uh, we buy into myths and stories and old beliefs that maybe don't hold true in today's marketplace, right? So I thought about this statement that we have to get good at talking to strangers. And uh, and I looked at all my sales for this year. So we're just about at the end of 20, what is it, 2019, coming to an end in, a, in a four weeks. I looked back at all my sales for the year and I pretty much tripled my sales of original artwork, retail uh, you know, income from 
my original artwork pretty much triple what it was the previous year. I looked at every sale and pretty much, you know, maybe 70% of them, it was true. They did come from strangers. But how many of those strangers did I actually have a conversation with? Zero, right? Not a single one of them did I actually have to have a conversation with. Uh, because, you know, a lot of them were sold online, they were sold through third-party marketplaces, um, they were sold off my website, and I never interacted with them in a face-to-face -face environment. So I never had to overcome a fear of talking to a stranger. So whilst this particular business coach is out there giving this advice, and it sounds good in the context of what he used to do 10 years ago or five years ago, it may not be relevant in today's marketplace, right? You may not need to be good at talking to strangers. Better advice would be get really good at talking on video because that has far greater implications than occasionally having a conversation with a stranger. Uh, video is the dominant marketing tool for artists moving forward for the, at least the next couple of years. I think virtual reality will overtake that um, very quickly. However, for the next couple of years, video and live stream is the artist tool uh, that's free, right? So anyway, my point is be careful when it comes to making decisions about how to earn an income. Be really careful about how you get advice and who you get it from, right? You want to find somebody who's in the marketplace right now selling their work and achieving great results. You want to find somebody who's currently right now in today's marketplace building a business around their, their art and earning a substantial income. And that's the only person that you want to be listening to and taking advice from. Uh, there's lots of people out there with great ideas and things that sound good and old myths and old stories and old beliefs around the art market. But the art market has changed so much in the last five to 10 years uh, that if you don't have current results, then whatever you think about the art market is probably outdated, right? So if you're gonna take advice from anyone, make sure you check into them and, and, and really analyze, is this person making any money whatsoever from their artwork, right? Are they operating on a day-to-day -day basis, producing art, and as a result of that production of art, earning an income? Now that income could come through multiple different ways, but this is the question you wanna ask before you buy into their version of what it takes to generate an income from art. And we, we too easily buy into what sounds good or what sounds comfortable, right? Um, or what sounds easy, you know? It's very easy for people to sell you art coaching programs uh, based on something they've dreamt up. You know, maybe they went and got a business coaching certificate and thought, oh, you know, in, in every coaching certification program, they tell you to pick a niche, right? So some people crazily go and pick art. Artists as their niche thinking that they can make money selling business coaching to artists. Now, you can, yeah, but if you've not been, if you're not currently a productive artist earning an income from your art, you really don't know. You really don't know what it takes in this day and age. So that's a bit of a rant, I know. Pardon me, I'll just have a sip of my cuppa. Um, that's a bit of a rant, but I think it's true. And I'm very, very selective about who I take advice from. Uh, there's, you know, People I know who write in major art magazines uh, who have absolutely no context of what's happening in the art world in 2019, right? No idea. But they're, they're, they're a columnist in a major art magazine and they publish all this information on making an income from your art that was relevant 15 or 20 years ago, but not relevant today. Um, very little application in today's marketplace, right? So... Uh, if you're not talking, if you're not taking advice from somebody who's thinking about where are we headed in the next two or three years, right? They're currently, you want to find somebody who, to take advice from who's currently in the marketplace producing artwork, generating an income stream from their art and being successful at that. But also they're looking forward to the next two, three, five, ten years. And they're asking the question, where are we headed? What's going to be the dominant technology? What's going to disrupt the art world in the next two or three years? And I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think it's going to be things like um, virtual exhibitions. I think that there's technology that's developed today to, to enable a platform where any artist can set up an exhibition, a virtual exhibition, and invite people from all around the world to come and experience their art uh, and walk through a gallery and look at all their art on the walls and get the details and buy their artwork, right? That, that technology is available right now, but not, not many artists have embraced it. Uh, 
I think virtual reality is going to be huge for artists, you know, so that you can actually experience art in your own home from, from anywhere. Um, right now, the current technology that every artist should be embracing is video and uh, live stream. So this is what I do on a weekly basis. I produce videos and I live stream twice a week and I'm connecting with an audience of people, right? And uh, so we're gonna, these are the things you need to be thinking about in terms of income generation. If you're still thinking about the old model of being in one or two galleries and having them make the sales and pay you, you know, your 50%, if you can create success doing that, then good and well, my advice won't help. Right? Because that model, I don't understand it. I'll put my hand up and say, I don't understand that world, that model. I know it still exists to a degree, but for the vast majority of artists who I'm looking to connect with on the Art of Soul podcast, it's probably just not part of our, it's not on the radar for most of us, right? Now, we might get lucky occasionally and get a little group exhibition in, a, in an art gallery, great, but you can't build a sustainable, reliable, leverageable, and growable income stream from that. It's spasmodic at best. You get the occasional sales, but it's a blip. It's not an income stream, right? So I'm all about helping artists. And when I set up my art business, this is what my focus was, right? Helping artists to develop reliable, consistent, ongoing, leverageable, and growable income streams. If it doesn't have those characteristics, then it's just a bit of luck, right? <laughs> it's a bit of luck. If you popped a piece of artwork into an art show and bang, you sold it for $1,500. But if you can't replicate that on a consistent and regular basis, then it's just like it's not an income stream, right? So we have to think this way. We have to think like business people um, if we're going to be successful in the art business. I know not every artist wants to be successful in the art business, and that is perfectly fine. Uh, but if you do want to, you've got to start thinking differently from perhaps what the group of artists you currently associate with, the way that they think, right? They're probably, unless they're all getting the result that you're looking for, they're probably not the best people to getting advice from either. So one of the things that I focused on right from the outset was I focused on two things, right? I focused, I, I knew that the, the business model of creating a piece of original artwork and then turning around and selling it was completely flawed, right? It's not sustainable, it's not leverageable, and it's not generally growable unless you can put your prices up continuously. But I know extremely successful uh, world-class artists who have priced themselves out of the market today. They hardly sell anything, right? Because over in the good times, they crept their prices up so high that in a fragmented market, which is what we're in now, uh, their prices are just beyond the reach of the vast majority of art buyers, right? Uh, or they don't see the value there. So you, you've got to be careful about pushing those prices too high too quickly. Uh, so let's talk about multiple streams of income. So the basic business of creating a piece of artwork and selling it is a fundamentally flawed business strategy, right? Um, because the moment you sell it and you put the money in your hot little hands, that money's gone soon enough, you know that, right? Art supplies, catch up on all your bills, pay your rent or your mortgage, bang, the money's gone. Uh, that means you're back to zero the next day. And if you just keep repeating that cycle over a year, two, five, 10 years, you get to the end of 10 years, and what have you actually built? You build a reputation, but nobody's gonna pay you for that reputation, right? Um, you built you know, maybe a, a bank of uh, regular customers who buy a few pieces from you every now and then, but if you're going through the gallery system, you don't own and control that customer base, the gallery does, right? So what have you really built if that's your business model? Probably not much. And I had a business background before really committing to becoming an artist. So I understood this concept of building assets. Assets are what, uh, you know, what business is all about. It's about leveraging assets to create income. And when I looked at my artwork, I knew straight away that selling the originals wasn't going to get me very far. Okay. Uh, and I was sta starting on the back foot. I wasn't that great an artist. I was a, a bit of a plotter, you know, a bit of a hack when I started out. And um, I'm getting better now. Uh, and I'm going to be great one day. I, I really believe that, probably 20 or 30 years' time. Uh, but for, for where I'm at with the nine years I've been painting, I'm, I'm quite happy with where my skill set's got to. Uh, I'm more than happy with where my business has got to, right? And the only reason why my business has, has become more successful than where my skill set is is purely because I focused in on assets and multiple streams of income. 
one of the things I did in the early days was I looked at all the artists that I admire, you know, in particular Australian contemporary landscape artists, right? And, and those painting plain air and impressionist landscapes. Pardon me, well, quick sip in my cuppa. Uh, and I looked at what their activity was like. You know, how many exhibitions were they doing a year? How many group shows were they going? What else were they doing to generate an income, right? And I noticed something really in particular uh, is that pretty much every single one of them made what appeared to be uh, or took up a large amount of their time. It appeared to be at least 50% of their time teaching art classes. And, and so that was a clue, you know. Some of the best landscape artists in Australia spend 50% of their time teaching art classes. So what does that tell you, right? It tells you that I'm pretty sure that half of them at least, I know there's some that like me who really enjoy teaching, uh, but there's probably half who don't really enjoy it that much. And uh, if they had a choice, probably wouldn't do the, as much teaching as what they do. So... Um, that tells you that even some of the very best landscape artists in the country uh, are probably not able to build a sustainable, reliable, consistent income stream just from the sales of their artwork. Now, I know that there are artists, if you go and look at some of the online galleries, there are artists who are currently really hot, making lots of sales and so on. They go through, you know, lots of artists go through um, periods where their work becomes really hot for whatever reason, and they sell lots. And it's easy to think in those times that you've got it made, that you've got it all worked out, right? Um, but it's only when you've been in the game for five, ten years that you start to realize that hot trends come and go. And so whilst you may be selling a lot right now of original artwork, in two years' time, that might just dry up, right? It might just disappear. So you have to be mindful of that. So if that happens, how else do you generate an income? And so I noticed, as I observed, that the vast majority of artists, the very good landscape artists that I followed, were all out teaching. And they were doing a lot of teaching, right? Some of them, um, you know, there's artists that I know who spend nearly half the year, four to six months of the year, overseas, on tours, teaching, doing workshops, right? Um, there's artists I know that go all over the country. They organize some of the workshops themselves, and others are organized by art societies and third-party groups but they're clearly generating a large portion of their income uh, through teaching and doing workshops. Uh, I noticed that lots and lots of artists that I admired had productized their art to a certain degree. So they'd created books, hard copy books, and they created DVDs, right? Now DVDs, their day is just about up, DVDs, right? With Netflix and so on, streaming video on the internet. Um, DVDs are almost done, but the concept is there, right? The idea of filming yourself, teaching a particular course or project uh, is valid, right? So now it's more moved online. That's where I built my business around online education for artists, um, beginner artists in particular, and teaching them how to paint. And um, so here's the thing. When I looked at how many of our really great artists here in Australia had DVDs and books. I looked at those and I thought, why are they doing that? Right? This is in the early days when I was trying to work it out in my head. And it occurred to me that what they're really doing is creating an asset that has an income stream. So if you go and create a DVD, and let's say it cost you $2,000 for argument's sake, I don't know how much they spent, but let's say it cost you $2,000 to produce one DVD for 90 minutes, right? Um, that's a big investment. And if you're selling that DVD for $50 a, a copy, then you're going to need to sell 40 copies to recuperate your investment. And so a lot of artists would balk at that. But here's the thing. Once that DVD is created, you create an income stream potentially for life because it's pretty much an evergreen product, right? So you create an income stream for life. So if you have one DVD, it gives you one income stream. If you had 10 of those DVDs out in the marketplace, then that gives you 10 different income streams. And they, only, they may only contribute a small amount per annum of your overall income. But as you start to accumulate these assets, right, that generate ongoing income, that income builds over time. And this is what I've done. I still get paid today for uh, art courses that I created around about seven years ago. Pretty much every day I get paid for those courses. And over the last seven years, I've accumulated 
probably 25, maybe closer to 30 different courses that I've created. Now that sounds like a lot, but I've been doing it for seven years. In the early days, they were pretty bad, right? I had no idea what I was doing in terms of filming and how to create a, uh, a video course and so on. I had no idea. Editing, I had to learn as I went. And so some of them are a bit rough, uh, but as I've grown and got better, uh, the technology that I've used has got better and I've learned the skills and I've developed it better and it's just, everything's got better, right? But it's the sum total of the effort put in over a period of time to build those assets uh, that has created for me a six-figure plus income um, based around my art, around teaching beginners how to paint. And, um, and what that means is if I don't want to work today, I don't have to, right? I've got to the point where I've got a whole lot of assets out there, not just teaching. I'll talk about some of the other assets in a moment, but I've got a whole lot of assets based around my artwork that generate me a significant income that if I want to go to the beach today, I can. I've got the freedom to do that, right? Um, and, you know, it hasn't been easy. It's been a lot of work. And in the early days, I copped a lot of criticism from other artists because I was doing something different, right? I, I got told by many artists, oh, you can't, you, people can't learn to paint with video online. And uh, I said, well, that's how I learned to paint, buying DVDs, right? <laughs> I bought hundreds of them and studied them. Um, so, you know, in the early days I was criticized. Today I don't hear so much criticism uh, as I've built success. Uh, but the important thing is building of assets. Now, I like teaching, so I create online courses and online projects. Today I just finished filming the 100th episode of Learn to Paint TV, right? It's a weekly um, painting project that I do to teach people how to paint. And, um, you know, that takes a lot of effort. That's consistency over a long period of time. So success doesn't come easily and it doesn't come overnight, especially in monetary terms, but it will come if you have a vision, you have a, a very clear picture of where you want to go in the future and you set yourself some goals to help you get to that vision and then you work away at it consistently over a long period of time. Eventually, the accumulated effect, the, what I call the law of compounding effort, starts to kick in and you start to get results beyond the effort you're putting in that day, right? So it's very different from having a job. In a job, you go and you do 40 hours this week and you get paid for 40 hours. If you don't do 40 hours next week, you don't get paid. Well, building assets in an art business can mean that for a period of time, you put a lot of effort in, but you get paid nothing. But then after a period of time, as you build momentum and leverage, uh, you then get paid a lot for less effort, right? And so you have this exponential growth curve, which kicks in after a period of time. So I would highly suggest to you to start looking at your art and start to figure out other ways that you can create an income stream based around building assets. So let me give you another example, because I know that there are people out there who you know, hear this and go, oh, I don't like teaching, so this is not going to work for me, right? So don't be so closed-minded. I'm just giving you examples here. You need to open your mind and be creative and come up with ways to create assets that lead to income. So here's another easy way or an obvious way, right, is uh, to, for every one of your originals that you create, get high-quality photography done. And you can then, those Photos then become the assets, right? Not the originals, because the originals you're going to sell and they're going to go out in the marketplace. But the copyright to the image through the photos becomes an asset base that you can then um, leverage for income through different ways down the track. And by the way, um, one of the things that I've done over the last nine years is everywhere I go, I've got my mobile phone and I take photos of the landscape and seascape. And I've built up a database of maybe seven or eight, maybe 10,000 photos in that time. Uh, that's an asset base, right? I can generate an income stream, and I do, by selling access to that photo library to other people, right? So think creatively. Think outside of just your original artwork. How else can you build assets that you can leverage? I know one artist who uh, he does fairly loose, expressive, semi-abstract type work, right? And um, he paints a lot. And he recently revealed that one of the things that he does, because he doesn't use photo reference and everyone wanted to know how he came up with the ideas. And so he showed that he had all these little you know, white cards and he got a black marker and he'd marked up different designs, right? And over the years, he created thousands of them. So there, that's an asset base that he's created, reference material, which he uses as the source of his original paintings. So what did he do? He photographed them all and put them into a PDF document 
and he started to sell them as resource guides for other artists, right? Um, you know, there's another way of generating extra income from one of the assets within your art business. I know an online education platform for artists and they hire models and they do a lot of life drawing and figure drawing and so on. Um, and they hire models and they take a ton of photos of the models and they've built up this huge library of nude, semi-nude models, male, female, in all different shapes and sizes. There's thousands of images there, right? So that's another asset base that they leverage through their membership model. So what else can you do if you, let, let's say you were taking high quality photos of your original artwork, what else could you do to leverage that asset base? Well, what about licensing? There's a lot of artists out there who make all their money through licensing the images of their artwork. That's where they make their money, right? Um, so if you have art that's particularly suited to licensing, that could be a potentially a huge income stream for you. I was recently on holidays up in Harvey Bay, uh, which is uh, a little touristy hamlet two and a half hours north of where I live in Noosa, right? Um, and, and there was a market there. I was walking through the market and I saw this local artist who had a double stall, um, her and her husband, and she created all this really funky, colorful artwork of the local area, you know, happy beaches and palm trees and so on. And she wasn't selling the artwork. She was selling small frame prints of the artwork, but what she was really selling was merchandise, right? So she'd taken the images and she put them onto pillows and to iPhone covers and onto T-shirts and you know, under a myriad of different things. Now, I know there are some artists that are probably choking on their own vomit at the sound of doing that because it doesn't, they, they think their art's above that, right? And that's perfectly fine. Um, not everyone's art is suited to going on a pillow, right? Uh, I don't think my art's suited for that. But what I'm doing is trying to demonstrate to you that there's multiple ways of generating an income stream from your art. And if you close your mind to the possibility, you'll only ever have one way of generating income, and that will be through selling the original artwork, which is a flawed business model, right? Eventually, you'll burn out. I know one artist, <coughs> pardon me, who makes you know a serious income, a serious income from his original artwork sales, and uh, you know we're talking multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Now his costs are very high, uh, but he he'd be pushing well over the half million dollars a year mark in original artwork, right? But, he, but the, he's got a fundamentally flawed business because he has to produce a ton of paintings every day. His output is huge. So when we get back to the, the idea of creating sustainable, consistent, reliable, leverageable, and growable income, how sustainable is that business model where you have to produce tons of paintings every day? It's not sustainable. Now, while he's young and fit and healthy and enthusiastic, he can plow on through the days where he doesn't feel like painting. But the day that he gets ill or, or he has a distraction, a major life event, uh, then that business model will just collapse, right? Um, so hopefully he's saving a good portion of the high income he's currently earning. Chances are good he's not, that, he, that he's uh, potentially uh, spending most of it, right? Um, but if he's smart, he'll be saving it because his business model is not sustainable. Now, I think he knows that because he's trying to leverage into other income streams. Um, I've seen artists who have developed professional art careers and one of the ways that they're, they're uh, creating an income stream for themselves is by mentoring young and up-and-coming artists, right? So you don't need to find half a dozen to maybe 10 up-and-coming artists to mentor each year. And let's say you charge them you know, $3,000 for a year of mentoring. There's a substantial income stream. That could be a quarter of your, your income just through mentoring. So if you've already had some runs on the board, you know, you could, you've could. you got a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and, and experience. Well, that's all an asset if you monetize it, right? Um, why do you think I'm doing the Artist Soul podcast? Uh, I want to reach out and help other artists for sure. But by the time I've done 200 episodes of this uh, podcast, uh, hopefully some of the information will be of value and will resonate with enough people out there that this whole podcast become an, becomes an asset. Now, is it a monetizable asset? Possibly. You know, lots of people make full-time living incomes from their podcasts, but, you know, there's other ways of monetizing things as well. So have a really, have a think about 
how else can you create income streams that is associated with your art? And you want to create income streams that don't require too much of your personal time, maybe time to set them up. But then once they're set up, that you can continue to generate an income stream ongoing. That way it becomes sustainable and leverageable, right? Um, just selling original artwork isn't sustainable and it's not that le leverageable evil either. The only way you can grow your income through a model where you're just selling original artwork is you put your prices up or you reach out to more people. If you reach out to more people, you've got to paint more. So it takes up more of your time, right? So it becomes less sustainable again. If you put your prices up, you run the risk of I'm hot right now, but in 18 months time, the market might cool on my style of artwork, but my prices are now locked in at a higher level and I've seen a lot of uh, you know, very successful professional artists in that, stuck in that mode right now. So I've said a lot in this uh, podcast and I really want to just rattle your way of thinking, your beliefs around money and how to generate an income from your art. Um, the first thing you've got to get over, and we'll talk about the psychology of, of money and how to attract money to you in the next podcast. But the first thing you really have to get over is the fact that it's okay for you to earn an income from your artwork, right? It's okay for you to build a business around your art and for your art to be the source of multiple streams of income. There's nothing wrong with money whatsoever. Some artists have got it in their head that uh, to be a purist artist or to really you know, have artistic integrity that you should never even think about money. Well, I think that's a little delusional. It's okay for a small percentage of artists, but for people like you and I, chances are good you've got a mortgage and bills to pay and car payments and kids in school and, you know, you need to buy new clothes and you know, life, right? We've got to be real. We've got to be real. Money is important and it's okay for artists to earn money. It's okay for artists to ask for money. Uh, it's okay to sell your work and to get money for it and to get a lot of money. There's nothing wrong with earning six figures or seven figures uh, for your artwork. It's perfectly fine. The, most of the economic world is happy for artists to earn a high income. It's only artists who have a mental roadblock to earning money, right? Um, and I don't know why. In, in every other endeavor, I mean, if you're a brain surgeon, you wouldn't be concerning yourself with earning half a million dollars a year performing brain surgery, would you? How many brain surgeons do you think have issues around money and asking for money? Um, I haven't met too many surgeons in general that, uh, that have issues around money. Why do artists have issues around money? Because we have these romantic notions that it'll, it'll uh, if money gets in the way, it'll affect our creativity and our artistic integrity. And maybe there's an element of truth to that, but we have to be realistic. We live in an economic planet. Money is important. We need to earn an income. And I, you know, I had people tell me I was a sellout in the early days because I was creating courses and selling courses. And I'm not afraid to sell, right? I, I'll get up there and promote my courses because I believe in them because I know they help beginners. They might not help intermediate to experience artists, but they definitely help beginners, right? Um, so I get up and passionately you know, share my message about my courses via video online. No problem at all, right? I feel good about it because uh, I love every day getting feedback from the market, you know, testimonials and comments and people thanking me for helping them, right? I love it because I know that I'm having an impact out there. So I have no issues around money whatsoever. Um, but if you're an artist that has issues around asking for money and receiving money, then you need to work on that. You need to really get to grips with where did that belief system come from? What? Because it's going to hold you back. It's going to hold you back. You know, I, I saw a comment from an artist uh, posted on Facebook one time and she said, I have no interest in, in selling my art for money, right? And, and I thought, oh, how sad, because she was a developing artist and she was going okay. Um, but her words and her activity were completely misaligned because every weekend she was out doing markets and she was in pop-up galleries and doing everything she possibly could to generate an income. But her language was, oh, you know, I'm not really interested in selling my art for money. And so there's a complete and utter disconnect. Why? Something, some belief system issue around money, right? You just have to know that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you earning an income from your art. There's nothing wrong with you earning a substantial income from your art and becoming wealthy through your art. There's nothing wrong with you having multiple streams of income around your art. There's nothing wrong with you building a business around your art, right? And, and turning it into a, 
a, a significant business like Bob Ross and Bill Alexander did and many others, many other artists have done it. Wyland, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you becoming affluent and even wealthy through your art at all. What's holding you back? Well, what you think and the strategies that you implement. They're the two things, right? There's no lack. I should point out, there's absolutely no lack in the universe that we live in right now. I'm going to get a little bit metaphysical for you, but um, some artists think that nobody's buying art today, yet the evidence shows that there's more art being sold than at any point in the history of the world, right? Um, just one example is an online gallery here in Australia, Blue Thumb, um, and on their website, they clearly state they've sold more than 20,000 pieces of art which would make them one of the dominant players in the Australian marketplace right now. Uh, so there's no lack. There's more art than ever being sold. The only lack is our ability to attract the money. The only lack is our ability to make the sales. The only lack is our ability to get the attention of the marketplace. And the only lack is our ability to be able to connect emotionally with people who want to buy art, right? That's where the lack is. There's no lack of supply of money. There's more money out there than has ever been before in the history of the world. Um, all of the money that, is, that exists right now is available to you. You just need to know how to attract it and you use your art as the vehicle to attract that money to you, right? You can't do that with the wrong thinking and the wrong belief system. So you need to go to work on that. And we'll talk about the mindset for wealth attraction uh, in our next podcast. Uh, but for now... Open your mind and start thinking about multiple streams of income. Just get a journal and start writing down different ideas. I mean, I've been journaling about my art business for the last five years. And if you went back through my old journals, you'll see some crazy ideas, some of which I tried implementing, many of which I didn't. Some that I implemented and failed terribly, right? Uh, I had lots of failures in building my art business, but I've also had lots of successes, right? So here's my challenge for you. Between now and our next episode, I want you to start journaling about different ways that you can generate an income. Start journaling about possible ideas that could become multiple streams of income for you and your art, all right? Do that, spend some time doing it, and we'll talk about the psychology and the mindset for wealth attraction in our next podcast. My name is Rod Moore. This is the Art of Soul podcast. You can find me on Facebook. Just look for Rod Moore Art or the Learn to Paint Academy. And uh, happy painting, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers for now.